Weather and life both change quickly. Do you have a farm estate plan? You need to learn the best option to help your family avoid or minimize federal estate taxes and other costs. I'm Brad Swenson, President of Swenson Investments and Commodities. We work confidentially with farmers, ranchers, and advisors to help develop the best farm estate plan. We talk a lot about fertilizer on Ag PhD, and fertilizer is really just plant food. But there is something else that farmers will put out on the soil called soil amendments. I mean, it's a pretty general and broad term. We wanted to make sure that you understand exactly what we are talking about when we mention soil amendments on Ag PhD. Well, with soils, they, they contain a lot of nutrients, they release nutrients for crops, but sometimes there are things that stand in the way. Maybe that soil doesn't have enough free calcium. Maybe that soil has a high pH or a low pH. Things like that can really impact the soil life and also the soil's ability to let nutrients go to the plants that are growing out there. So one of these soil amendments, for example, is lime, which is calcium carbonate. In soil, there is, well, really in most soils, especially in the Midwest, there's all kinds of calcium. And so plants rarely are lacking for calcium. But you say, well, why do you need this calcium carbonate then? Why are you putting it out on the soil? Well, what happens is when you put lime on the soil, you are able to take a low soil pH of, let's call it 5.5 and raise it up maybe in just a year's time to 6.0 or preferably 6.3 or better when you can raise that soil pH closer to neutral which is 7 you should get better crops. Well when you get that low pH you say well wait a minute why would you ever let your pH get low if it's going to hurt your crops. It happens over time with different things going on in the environment with just where your root mass grows your roots on plants release organic acids trying to bring nutrients in and if there's something out there like a compaction layer that limits the root growth so all of your roots are growing in the top say six inches of your soil and that's it they can't get below that now you've got all those acids being released in that small amount of ground and if you end up over time building up acid that lowers pH. A lower pH means more acidic. So if you get that low pH, adding some lime out there can help things move. So when you have that low pH soil and the acid soil, basically that means it's got a lot of hydrogen in it. Well, when you put the calcium carbonate on there, CaCO3, what you'll end up with, the chemical reaction that's going to occur, is you're going to end up with three things. You're going to have just free calcium, which is good. Again, plants need that calcium, H2O or water, and carbon carbon dioxide, which is simply going to go up in the air. Carbon dioxide, that helps them grow. Yep, that's what they breathe is, is carbon dioxide. So anyway, there's nothing negative that comes from this. You just spread that lime out there. It changes your soil's pH, and in the long run, you end up with better crops. But it really technically isn't plant food, so we can't call it fertilizer. It's a soil amendment. Okay, let's take the opposite soil condition. Let's say that we've got a really high pH, and we want to get that pH lower. A high pH is, is very alkaline and that's not very conducive for growth of many different crops. So farmers definitely want that high pH to get lower. And they say, well, what's the additive that I can put out there, a soil amendment for high pH? Well, there isn't one. There isn't really a product that you just say, put this out and it's going to forever drop that pH down to where it needs to be. Not forever, but we can drop it in the short term with elemental sulfur because it's going to basically form sulfuric acid in the soil and if you put enough elemental sulfur on you could take an 8.5 pH down to a 7 pH just like that. So it would take almost no time if you put enough elemental sulfur out. Now the average farmer in his situation can't do that because he can't afford to do that but a gardener certainly could do it. So sulfur is a fertilizer but when you talk elemental sulfur we basically consider that a soil amendment because we're putting way more sulfur out there than what the crop needs. We're putting the sulfur out to change the way the soil is. Okay let's say that we don't have very good soil tilth and our soil is uh, getting soil crusting on the top where you get a half inch or quarter inch thick hard layer on top after you get a hard rain in the spring. One thing that could be used to increase tilth in your soil is calcium sulfate or gypsum. So with gypsum, here again, I, I mean you could consider that a fertilizer because you've got calcium, you've got sulfur, plants need those things, but a lot of farmers are putting on significantly higher levels than what the plant is going to need in order to change their soil. And this whole gypsum thing has been debated a lot. Some people really believe that it changes the tilth of their soil other people do not. It, I think it depends a lot on what you have for well, soil conditions. it's very rate sensitive and that's the whole thing. If you're going to put 100 pounds an acre out, that's one thing. If you're going to put 2,000 pounds an acre out, that's another. 
So it depends on what type of soil you have. If you have very heavy soil, it's going to take a little bit more. And really, let's be honest, that's where a lot of the gypsum's getting used on some heavier ground. Guys just can't be looking at, well, I don't know if I want to spend quite that much money. You have to look at, look, what rate is it going to take to be responsive in my soil? And for a lot of farmers, if they do a little experimenting, they'll try low rates and higher rates, and they'll notice a difference in their soil. Well, once again, soil amendments may not be fertilizers, you, I guess you could probably call them fertilizers because they contain some plant nutrients, but we put them on at much higher rates in order to change certain characteristics of the soil to make that ground better long term for crop production. Unfortunately, none of those changes are going to help us control this week's Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 